I'm the founder of Adira and this is my black market today so I'm the managing director of Adira. I asked the chief exec what are you doing for Black History Month and she said look I'm going to be honest with you we've got nothing planned and she said have you got any ideas and I said well actually <laughs> I do why don't we have Sheffield's first African Caribbean market and she loved the idea and she put her whole team behind it. Oh, I feel proud and privileged every day to be the Chief Exec of Sheffield. We're an amazing city, but especially today, it's really wonderful to see so many people here in the city centre celebrating our black culture, our black communities, our heritage, and, and just, you know, lifting it up in the way, the way it deserves. So it's been really lovely to be here um, and to be able to bring my family, bring my kids, enjoy some great food, enjoy some amazing music. Um, and I'm really proud that as a council we've got behind it and got behind the team who've delivered this because they've, they've done a brilliant job. I'm, I'm based in Leeds. Leeds also has its sites where these activities happen and where they happen you can see the real benefit of, uh, of diversity because it brings people together who are within a recognised community but it also enables people to bridge across communities as well. Back in the 80s we had lots of things going on for black people, we had black carnival, you know, we'd walk the streets and, you know, decorated and dressed in our carnival gear. I myself was part of that, we'd put on fashion shows, but after a while, after, well, it's been a few decades now that not very much has been happening, not on this level anyway, and as small as it might feel today, it's, it's a massive step forward in terms of the the council getting involved and the community kind of getting, you know, backing us. And so I'm really pleased that we've, you know, Ursula's been able to kind of get, get all this together and for people to be here today. So it's, it's amazing opportunity. This. I feel absolutely privileged. Uh, this is amazing and I hope that year on year this grows and let's fill the city centre with this event for a much longer period. It's absolutely great to take part in this event with such amazing people. Sheffield was the first city of sanctuary in this country and I'm so proud of that as well. I think Black History Month is really important in terms of giving uh, concept, concept and consciousness of black ideas and black people to place it properly within, white, within this society. So people see us, understand that we are part of the fabric of communities, uh, we have wide range of people in terms of social economic strata and I think it's really important that when people see us they see us see us and see us as a part of it you know I think it's something that should you know should be there I mean maybe not so much of a black black market I mean it but um, you know more black um, traders you know sort of maybe working together um, but maybe not just one week a year of it yeah but I mean it, it has been good because it's been nice sort of meeting other people and sort of seeing what you know what everybody's selling to the wider community I think this is something that will open up the the minds of individuals who are closed it is an opportunity that People got to know what each cultures are and respect them from a perspective that no one culture is better than anyone else. Decorated like the blood vessels of midnight streets in Philadelphia. And his cadence, his cadence embodied revolution. Now, like the dreams of my youth, where in sleep I sought out validation from favored artists, I woke myself up with a croaked in a voice proclaiming, I need that. I was speaking of the cape. Well, the one thing the chief 
Chief Executive of Sheffield City Council said was, even before this, as soon as I said it, she said, this is amazing, but I don't want it to be a one-off. I want it to be every year. So this is going to be ongoing. And having different stalls, you've got the elders here on stalls, but you've also got the young people, your 25s and under, who never get a foot in the door at things like this. You know, you've got the people who usually do markets and, you know, so we know young people have got a lot of micro businesses. So it was important for me to get them here on the stalls, but also for them to showcase their artwork because young people aren't always good at expressing themselves verbally, but they can spit word. They can paint, they can write a book. So that's why we've got all those other activities on as well. So that not only can we see our history as the elders, but we can see them because we're now passing the baton. What would happen if I accepted my pain and loved my scars like man them loved their fast cars? Made peace with my shortcomings for he who came this season was short because he knew what was coming. So it lasts for a night, but his joy comes in the morning. My eyes finally ready to see the dawning. Like all the great things, it's never, it's a combination of everybody working together and then I think it was about saying, okay, how do we build something and put something on that's going to be a success? How do we get the, the right blend of stalls? How do we get the communications out? And there have been some, you know, hiccups along the way like there always are with these sorts of events. But the important thing was that throughout it all, we all kept talking, we kept listening to each other and, and, and we worked as a team. And I think that is a lot of what I personally, and I know we as a council, that's what we're trying to do a lot more of across many more of our areas of work. A long-term project like this can have untold benefits and unintended consequences. Um, what it does do, it gets people local people thinking that they're being seen and that they're being recognised and it makes them feel as though they belong to, to Sheffield. What this will send a message out to the general community in Sheffield is that as black people we are part of the community and it, I might be controversial in saying this but we're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere and the more we are included rather than excluded for whatever reason, the more we can come together as a community and build an even better community. My advice to other cities and parts of the country would be to the mayors to sit down and invite people to come and talk to them, but most of all, listen. I think it will say to our young people, our young children of African descent, um, to give them a sense of pride, inspire them and hopefully encourage them to see um, that they can, like I said earlier, can be a part of the fabric of this society. When you look up and down the market here, it's great to see us here, but here's what, where are we across the rest of the city? What I want to see is I want to see black businesses in this city and I hope that days like today, months like today, become something that is part of the fundamental fabric of this city. I, I personally think that the, it's an opportunity that we can engage with the communities. If you're not in any form of, of um, organization or any form of, of community groups or whatever, this is the opportunity to try and get yourself and your opportunity engaged with other groups within the community. I want to say if you want to do something like this get on the ground get on the ground to organizations like mine that's where we are on the ground yeah because if I hadn't come forward with this idea and if I hadn't pushed and fought for this this would never have happened because the council will still be having a meeting now about having a meeting about having a meeting about doing this till December 
So if you want to work with people like me and get things like this done, get in the hole. That's what I would say to the council. And to our people, <laughs> I know you're tired. I know you're tired. We're all tired. But keep going. Keep going. We've got to keep going. We can't let the younger generation see us stop. We can't let Rosa sit for nothing. We can't let Malcolm and all these people walk for nothing. So keep going. to the pictures, the fish, the cabinet with the extra special bits, the paraffin lamp, oh my gosh, it is the deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, brings back memories. I think it's, it's brill, it's awesome. It is, everything is how it was and you don't have to be a black person. Everybody had a special room back then you know for visitors for the untouched things so this is my organization which is the level up foundation and it really we want to take youth higher that's what we want to do so we've been putting on projects throughout the summer we've been running from 2019 we did online sessions during covid uh, we're meeting back up face to face now doing sports activities um, so that is the organization that i founded do you have a story about the front room? You told me earlier about the cousin. About the cousin, yeah. So I know the front room very, very well. I know it by not being able to be go inside it. <laughs> I knew it from outside, just peeping in, because we weren't allowed to touch anything in this room, because this is their favourite room. But one time, uh, me and my cousins were playing. We went in the front room and we started running around, and he tripped up on the table and broke one of the fishes. And it took us about an hour for us to say, what are we going to do? <laughs> Who's gonna, who did it? <laughs> was it you? Was it you? Was it you? <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were never ever allowed in the front room again after that. Never. It's a, it's a sacred place. Yeah, sacred <laughs> place. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, Gwen. F first of all, I want to ask you, have you had permission by your parents to come in the front room? Uh, this is my room. Are oh, your room? I am, I am the parent. <laughs> If you mash me cabinet, you know, with that stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, it's amazing. It's just catapulted me back to my parents' house and how they used to roll with the front room. And you heard the young lady before. So what was the brainchild behind this? And how have you managed to get so many authentic pieces? I did a funeral in Sheffield many years ago. Um, and I was asked to sing at this funeral and the person we were burying was the person I know who could make greater cake and coconut drops and I got concerned that we're going to lose all these people lose all this skill years later um, I opened a project called Voice of Vision Community Choir and from that um, we had some people write uh, for Black History Month about the front room and we designed a small dialogue about the purpose and the aims of the front room but I wanted to make it more dramatic so we wrote a play called Echoes of the Front Room. You are standing on the set of Echoes of the Front Room. We have a kitchenette, we have a bus stop and we're soon to have a bedroom. I feel privileged and honoured to be inside the front room. Yes. May I ask you a quick question then? What's your favourite piece of the front room? <laughs> me fish. I get me fish after me first pad na draw. Praise God. They gave me a little promotion, you know. And from the promotion I was able to purchase me fish. 
Yeah. Sheffield has a, an African descent market. What do you think that will say to the next generation? It says that we matter. And it also says that we have something to be proud of. Because I think what's interesting about growing up in England, we're kind of like a new race of people. Do you know what I mean? We are, we are a new version of blackness, <laughs> you know. And it's good to celebrate that, you know, we are Jamaican Brits, Nigerian Brits, African Brits. And we've only been around since like, the 1950s. So I think it's good to just celebrate who we are. Because a lot of the time, we look to America, we look to American history, but we do have our own history right here in England and, uh, and new traditions and a new culture that we've created for us ourselves and we should love that, we should embrace it and we should just share it with everybody. How has it been received then? Um, from, I was oh. talking to an African brother there a while ago and he was saying um, everybody had a, a special room. But I said, but we, we called ours the front room. What's it been received from other communities other than the African Caribbean community? This has been one of the most emotional displays I've ever been a part of. Every nation that has walked past here has stopped, has pointed, has made a comment, but they have demonstrated that they identify with the space we have here today. And I'm not quite sure why that shocked me, but it did. It really surprised me. I grew up in an African Caribbean home and I had a front room and it's when I was writing the script I realised everybody else had the same things in the front room. So it's been a really the responses has been really, really emotional. I can't leave the set without asking you, give me one of your stories, your favourite story of the front room. Was it one of celebration or was it one of trepidation? I played truant from school one day. I went to, went to my house and brought some friends with us. So front room key was on top of the, yeah, the okay, cupboard door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got the friends and went into the front room. My friend Sylvia Lang <laughs> took a baby, a cherry bee, opened it, sipped a bit, and then attempted to put soda stream water in the cherry tree buckle, which went right up my mother's white, white, <laughs> white neck curtain. Okay? And then I heard my dad, Zephyr Ford, <laughs> coming round the corner. And if you remember a Zephyr Ford, yeah. if you change gear, the community knew. <laughs> and we had to run from my house to my school. I did get beaten, but that's the memory I got the most of the soda buckle and the cherry bean. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for Oh, it's a pleasure. Things. It's I a pleasure. I feel so emotional as well with your sister. It is. is oh. Thank you. Thank you.